Welcome. Today we are going to cover TG43 and the modular dose rate equation. So whether you are just studying this in your medical physics studies, curiosity, or possibly preparing for the part three ABR therapeutic medical physics exam, we're gonna jump into this equation and understand it the best that we can. So this equation is a modular dose rate equation that gives the 2D dose and it's given by TG43. Now this equation is for cylindrical sources and it gives a dose rate in a medium like water from that center of that cylindrical source. Typically it's used in HDR and LDR brachytherapy to estimate the doses for the dosimetry. So that's what this equation is and if you're studying for part three, that is the most obvious first question you may gain from what they may ask. So the second would be to actually dissect each one of these parts and to tell you what some of the physical characteristics are. So the first term is simply the dose rate given in polar coordinates with a radius and an angle associated with that to a point away from the center of that cylindrical source. The second term here is the air kerma strength. Now this is the air kerma rate in vacuo of photons of an energy greater than delta. And in a written form, it could be seen as the air kerma is that kerma this delta is that energy threshold and that's in terms of a distance and all of that is multiplied by distance squared. So uh, the units here which will definitely be something that may be of interest not only to you but examiners and or testers if you were just studying in general is centigrade cm squared per hour and for shorthand reasons we consider that a u so that is a unit now this air kerma strength is found by nist using a wide angle free air ionization chamber and you can find that from uh, the manufacturer that you purchase the uh, isotope from next we have our dose rate constant this is a dose rate per unit air kerma strength at one centimeter along the transverse midplane the units are centigrade per hour u and this depends on the type of source that you're using the construction of that source and the encapsulation that is used next we have the geometry factor this accounts for geometric fall off of photon fluence with distance so essentially inverse square law the units here are simply centimeter to negative two and that depends on the distribution of the radioactive material uh, for a point source the geometry factor would just be equal to one over r squared. And as I mentioned, it generalizes the inverse square correction. Next, we have our radial dose function. Now, this is the uh, radial dependence of photon absorption and scatter in the medium along the transverse midplane. This is unitless. We also have the anisotropy factor in which this normalized at pi over two uh, at the transverse midplane, it accounts for the angular dependence of photon absorption and scatter in the encapsulation. There are no units for this as well. And this factor you can find within TG43 and it's based off the seed isotope and the model number. And there are different factors for polar angles, radiuses, and the Radial dose function can also be found in TG43 based off the isotope and model of the seed as well. And that's based off R at just simply the radial distance. So another question that may be asked both on a test or part three is what are the disadvantages of using the modular dose rate equation in TG43? So that includes the fact that there is no heterogeneity it assumes that everything is water, which obviously isn't always correct when we're considering brachytherapy. However, we've based all of our prescriptions off this model, and so regardless of whether it's maybe a true dose or not, we know what works and what is accurate. 
uh, and it also assumes a single source. Obviously, we have different softwares that can consider multiple sources, multiple dwell positions, and so we found ways around that, but it's still a limitation of TG43. So a question that may not be a TG43 specific, but many times they like to be sure that you can connect one a category of a question to another and they may ask that if you have a uh, line source say and what is the distance that you have to be far away from to consider that a point source and for that when a point in question is about three times the largest dimension of the source then you can consider it a point source again not a tg43 question but something that radiation safety wise is good to know or possibly even in radiotherapy so final thing a couple things i think that may be important to just know for your curiosity or for, for further background so there is a task group 43u and so that is just uh, includes extra guidance in extrapolating numbers for a lot of these factors like the radio and anisotropy function and there's also a slightly different definition of air kerma strength if you want to look into that the definition is slightly different but there is somewhat of a difference there and finally uh, tg186 is a new primarily being used in research but that is essentially our dose rate equation that includes heterogeneity corrections so although not clinically being used yet is still something that is definitely intriguing and we may move to in the future Future. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please list below and look forward to the next video pertaining to medical physics or atomic physics.